This is the place on Saturdays at 1 o'clock where Utah's culture and religion collide. Later on, we're going to be talking about current events. We're going to be talking about some House bills that failed to pass this week and last week at, at the Capitol. We are going to be talking to Nancy Workman, former mayor of Salt Lake City, on the program today. We're going to be talking to her about political aspirations she may have for the future and some local political issues going around, on around the valley. Phone lines are open. Salt Lake 254-5855, Provo 470-5855, Ogden 670-5855. Let's go to Nancy on line six. Nancy, are you with us? I am with you. Hey, thank you for coming on the program today. We very much appreciate it. Well, thank you. This is fun. Just to remind our listeners a little bit about who you are and your situation, you were the mayor of Salt Lake County from, what were the, when were you elected in, or put in office? Was it 2000? 2000, yes. Uh-huh. Through 2005. You did a great job while you were there. David Yoakum, the district attorney, accused you of uh, misappropriating some county funds, and you were acquitted in February. Is that right? That's correct. And this is something, I followed the story. I feel bad about it. I remember it, it well. I have a problem sometimes when I see Democratic district attorneys filing charges against prominent Republican politicians. Sometimes it seems to me like the district attorneys have political aspirations of their own, and I think that that's what's happening in the Tom DeLay case. I, I see it sometimes. We want to ask you about some issues around Salt Lake, but before we do that, what are you currently doing now? It sounds uh, like you're involved in some businesses and things around... Well, I, uh, I was a general engineering contractor before I went into politics, so I have obtained my engineering license again and headed back towards the construction business. Meanwhile, I've been uh, asked to do some consulting, so I have been a little busy with my, a couple of consulting contracts and, and working a little bit up on the hill, so well, it sounds that's like, been very fun. It sounds like you're still staying active in politics a little bit. I, see, um, I, see I have a lot of friends there, so it's hard to to walk away from you know these years of of friendships, and, and so it's great to see everybody again. Are we going to see you run for office again sometime? Is there any chance of that, or is it completely over for you? Well, you never say never, because I found out the first thing I, when I say I'll never do something, that's the very first thing I go and do. So, but it's not something I'm pursuing right now. It was an honor to serve as as Salt Lake County Mayor. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I felt like we did some uh, very good things for the people and accomplished a lot of what I wanted to do. But I am—I enjoy working, and and I enjoy the construction business, and I enjoy the consulting I'm doing right now. So I enjoy life, and I enjoy lot, uh, doing a lot of things. I don't have any uh, aspirations towards uh, running for a political office right at the moment, though. Well, I think you did a good job as mayor, and for what it's worth, I think voters have a very short-term memory. I don't think this is the kind of thing that would cause you as many problems maybe as, as you think in the future. Well, thank you. We interviewed Rocky Anderson a few weeks ago on the air. We interviewed Dale Lambert and Eric Jurgensen, members of Salt Lake City Council, and we asked them about some things that concern us and some of our listeners going on around Salt Lake, and we hoped we could pose a couple of the same kind of questions to you as you were so involved in uh, local politics do you think Salt Lake is commuter friendly? Is it becoming less commuter friendly with time? Uh, you're referring to people driving into Salt Lake. Well, there's the Main Street Plaza has caused pro problems oh, okay. for Davis County people moving in. There's not an exit on North Temple. There's not really any good mass transportation coming in from Davis County, and Rocky Anderson is refusing to allow a road to be built connecting North Salt Lake to Salt Lake City over the top of the hill there in the avenues. What do you think about these kinds well, of things? Well, I disagree with Rocky. Uh, he's the mayor of Salt Lake City, and I guess he feels that's that's what his constituents want. He has discouraged people from driving into his city from day day one and tried to get people on commuter rail, which doesn't exist, that service doesn't exist for people, and they can't get to Salt Lake, you know, from wherever they're at. Um, so it's just it's just a, a policy he has set. I think it, um, I don't think it serves Salt Lake City well to cut them off from the world, and just the only way they can access Salt Lake City is from mass transit, and yet, on the other hand, 
it's difficult to find parking when you get down there and so I can kind of see his his point is if he can get everybody coming in by rail, then they won't have to worry about parking. But people have got to go be able to get down there, do some business, or they want to go a jazz game, or they, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's our capital city. They need to be able to get into it. I grew up in Davis County, and it's frustrating for me and other people who live there. He came on here, and he said, if you don't like trying to commute into Salt Lake, move to Salt Lake. <laughs> and uh, he said flat out that roads make commuting harder. We sh- almost we shouldn't even have roads. We should all use mass transportation. And yeah. it's frustrating for me and for other people to hear that sometimes because it is difficult to get in. And 200,000 people from the figures we have commute into Salt Lake every day. Salt Lake's economy more than any other city is dependent on commuters. It is. It is absolutely. People work there. They, they have to do business there. Um, yeah. yeah you've, and so if you're going to help your businesses, you need to help people get to your your constituents and get to get to downtown Salt Lake. So there's probably some other people that would have taken a different avenue than Rocky. From what you saw when you were mayor, what kind of relationship does Rocky Anderson have with the church? Oh, I does... couldn't speak to what his relationship with the church is. The church is very gracious to to everybody, and uh, and I think you know, as far as relationship, they love everybody the same. So I don't. I don't see that. Well, certainly there was some friction between them over the Main Street Plaza thing three or four years ago. Did they yeah. get Did they get over that? Do you think? Well, that's that's the church's way. They're forgiving. You know, I got in the middle of that Main Street Plaza thing. I just thought that's you know I hate to see dissension and all this controversy going on. It was a you know it was their plaza and they made it a gorgeous place, just a a wonderful place uh, that really is an asset to the city. So it all turned out okay in the end, but it just, was, it just had to go a, a difficult route. Do you think, I, I agree, I think the church does Im- immeasurable good for Salt Lake City. They bring tourists here, they, they help the economy, but still there are people who claim that, that the church is doing the opposite, that they're now driving businesses out of Salt Lake, and that through things like the purchase of Crossroads Mall and the Triad Center, they're turning the Triad Center into a BYU extension. They may put residential housing on top of Crossroads and ZCMI malls. That they're trying to control the city a little bit, maybe uh, make sure that there's more conservative people surrounding Temple Square than there were before. Is there any truth to those kinds of rumors? Do you agree with that? Well, I don't agree that there's a political motive. I think there is. I think this is the driving motive for the church is, is this is their. This is where their temple is. This is their headquarters. They want Salt Lake City to the, be the best it can possibly be, and it was in dire straits. Uh, we were having. We were losing retailers. Um, the main streets boarded up. Uh, the city was was hurting, and and I think they were distressed about that. Uh, they. Did the Main Street Plaza a great success, but still the downtown was hurting. So now they've stepped up and bought the Crossroads Mall. Now they're, to me, they have said, okay, we are going to do some great things and revitalize downtown Salt Lake. Well, sometimes that scares people because we're all paranoid, but I don't think it's anything to be paranoid about. I think, uh, thank goodness for the church, they're investing Hard dollars, huge numbers, five hundred million to revitalize the downtown, and and make Salt Lake City what it should, what a capital city should be. Vibrant, people walking around, stores open. Uh, is it going to hurt for a while? Yeah, you're going to hurt a little bit till they get it, till they get it done. But so right now, you know, stores are okay. Where are we going to be? What what's going to happen? How do we play in this? And so they're pulling back and waiting to see how they can fit. And so we're going to have, you're going to see some still the boarded up stores, and you're going to see some paranoia. But it is going to be great, just great for the city. The political um, deal, I just don't, you know, I just don't, I don't get to, I don't think that, I've never seen the church, as I was county mayor, I never had them come to me and say, we want you to do, you know, anything. They didn't want me in the mid. They didn't ask me to get in the middle of the Main Street Plaza. That was my own doing. Uh, they they um, 
didn't do anything. You know, if they had a problem with Rocky, he still was reelected, and they never said a word about it. They never got in the middle of that election. That is just not their style. When I met you two days ago up at the state capitol, I was up there trying to get Bill 179, House Bill 179 passed, which makes it so that businesses, particularly businesses around Salt Lake, uh, can't hire people without verifying that their Social Security number is accurate. Do you think that illegal immigration is becoming a problem around Salt Lake City? Well, I think the, when, you first, when you say the word illegal, a red flag goes up. I think it's a problem for our nation, not just Utah, but the entire nation. We're dealing, we're, uh, we're struggling with this illegal component that is um, a real problem, and it's. Nancy, we have to take a quick two-minute break. Can you, okay. hold, can you hold with us? Sure. We'll be right back. This is K Talk, Salt Lake 254-5855. We've got Nancy Workman. We'll be right back. Dependable, hardworking, breadwinner. These are words you used to hear. Then your health failed, you couldn't work, and all that changed. Still, you didn't worry because for years you paid in Social Security taxes, knowing that the government would keep its bargain to pay you Social Security disability if you couldn't go on. But so far, the government hasn't kept its promise. You're exhausting your savings and you're facing the battle of your life. It's a battle you don't have to fight alone. I'm Henry Wansker of Deseret Disability Law, and I've been fighting the government in cases just like this for people just like you for nearly 25 years. I'd be honored to represent you. Call 746-7272 or toll free 866-393-7272. Deseret Disability Law. Social Security Disability is what we do and it's all we do. Looking for the perfect gift? Look no further. Active Nails gives the gift of beauty, time, and ease. With Active Nails, there are no backfills, no harmful chemicals, no broken or split nails, just beautiful nails all the time. Active Nails makes sure you never have to worry about rescheduling your life around your manicure appointments again. Active Nails are applied and removed at your leisure when you choose. Active Nails are custom created for your hands. They look polished and perfect every time you wear them. There is no filling or drilling to your natural nail. It is a pain-free process, and one set of active nails can last a lifetime. You can wear active nails every day or just for special occasions. The choice is yours. Call now to find out about seasonal specials for only 25% down on your set of active nails today. To learn more, call 801-924-0002 or visit their website at activenail.com. Again, that number... Nine two four zero 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 two. Active nails. We're back. I'm Steve Reinhardt. We've got Nancy Workman on with us, former mayor of Salt Lake County. We're discussing some local political issues, getting her insight into those issues. We'll take some calls here in a minute. But Nancy, we were talking about the immigration problem, the growing immigration problem around Utah. Why are our legislators so reluctant to pass laws controlling this problem, reforming it? Well, I can't speak for why or what their difficulties are. I have not heard uh, what, what's going on there, or you know, maybe it's uh, by each law and how when you say a, an employer has to verify if the Social Security is correct, and then you have to give them the means to be able to do that. Then the government's got to step up and give them easy access to Social Security numbers and identity and. Uh, I think you're going to have a fiscal note with that that's probably going to slow that down. But, well, boy, I'm with you. The, 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 what's pouring into our borders is just a, an, a, when we're supposed to be having, you know, a, a, where we have a war on terror and, and people are just boiling over the borders, that's a, a frightening thought. This uh, bill was set up. It would only require the employers to verify the Social Security number on the Internet. Apparently, there's already a website that allows them to do that. Oh, great. And the Utah's Manufacturers Association was opposed to it, as were a couple of other businesses. It, does the business community have that much influence on the? Well, you know, they're up there, and they're, they, they're constituents, and, and they, they have a right to express their, their point of view. And, and we all think it's evil, and they donate money, and so it's evil, but it's being one that people donated to my campaign, you're still going to do the right thing, and that's what you hope people donate to your campaign for, is because they believe that you're, uh, they they agree with your position or your philosophy, and I've just 
watch those legislators up there with the difficult calls that they have. They're listening to you. They're pondering, and they're going to try and make the best decision they can um, and try to make it fair. It's not that they're for, you know, they're just, they've been bought and paid for. That is just, it just isn't the case. I just don't believe that. And I, they're going to listen to you, whether you donated to their campaign or not. They're going to hear what you have to say, and they're going to try and craft something that they can, that works. And then if it doesn't, they'll fix it. You know, you're back again next year. That's the, that's the good part of this is if there's a screw up or a better way than it, you have next year and you can fix it. Well, um, we, we couldn't get them even to meet with us. We submitted green sheets trying to talk to a few of them that were on the appropriate committee. We, well, couldn't, we yeah. couldn't get them to come out. It was, it was difficult for us, and it's just frustrating. It's something that's talked a lot about this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a problem. It just is a problem. And I wouldn't take it too personal, but they wouldn't come out. When I was up there, they were behind on their agenda. They were, they were told to stay and vote and get, and get some business done. And, and, if you, and, the, and the halls were just packed with people waiting, and, and it was nothing personal. It just is. It's just the process. It's goofy. Uh, it, when I was first was up there, I thought, this is insane. There's got to be a better way. But it, eventually it works, and and you will be heard. And I'm sure they've talked to you sometime. Um, if, you know, not yet, not that day, sometime, as soon as they can. Hopefully we can make progress next year. We have a couple of callers with questions for you. Do you mind okay. taking a couple of calls? We've got Trevor on line four. Trevor, are you with us? Yeah, right here. Hey, thank you for calling the program. Do you have a question or comment for Nancy? I was just wondering uh, how Nancy felt about uh, the, the election, how it went down. I wonder if she was disappointed that Ellis Ivory didn't get in or how, that, how she felt about all that. Um, well, thanks, Trevor. Yeah, well, it was just a difficult thing. I was disappointed I couldn't run again. I, I uh, was not, I had a lot of things I wanted to do. Some of the things happened anyway, and so that was good. Um, I just have a lot of faith in the voter, voters. They've made, uh, uh, they, they do the best they can, and they made a choice. And Peter is a nice person, and some of the things that I was concerned about got done anyway. There's, uh, county's just a, you know, was in a transition going from a commissioner, form of government, to a mayor. I've made mistakes, and, and some of those things were corrected. So that was good. That was good. It all turned out okay. I'm a happy camper, so, and uh, and the people are being served. Well, Nancy, we really appreciate you coming on the program here for a few minutes today. We have a commercial break coming up that we've got to go to, but uh, we wish you luck with your business ventures and with uh, anything you try to do in the future. Well, thanks for having me on, and I wish you luck. I turn, I have more time now, so I listen to your station. Far more than I ever did, and I really enjoy it. You're, uh, you're you're working hard to do, put on good programming, and give your the people some really great information. So thank you for that. Thanks again, Nancy. We have to break for a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. This is Kate. Our radio ads about the simple selling solution, which offers you flexible commissions and the right to fire me if you're not satisfied. But wait, there's more. I guarantee that I will sell your home in 30 days or less, or I will do it for free. That's right, free. What else can I say? A good realtor walks you through every step of your sale or purchase. A great realtor does that, plus stands behind their work by giving you a 30-day guarantee. Remember, I'm not bragging. I'm simply applying for a job. I want to be your realtor. Want to find out more? Call me, Linda Bills. 3473384 flexible commissions cancel any time and a 30 day guarantee linda bills 3473384 or check us out on the web the saltlake mls.com some conditions apply <laughs> 